This isn't going to be easy to admit, but after two years of being a canine nutritionist and seven years of DIY raw feeding my pets, I've started to develop a few unpopular opinions. No matter where I am in life, I'll always be learning. And this means that my views may change as time goes on, even if others disagree. So let's begin with my first unpopular opinion. In most videos on my channel, I make sure to drill balancing your pet's raw diet, meaning you need to provide all the nutrients they need to thrive within their meal, whether that's balancing daily or over time. But when I talk about balancing a raw diet for growing puppies, kittens, and kits, I stress that unlike adults, they're unable to regulate nutrients in their body on their own. So they need all the nutrients in their meal every single day to grow properly. To me, this sounded right, but something in the back of my mind kept asking, are growing pets really that fragile? Back when Matsu was a puppy, I was still just a beginner. I knew the prey model ratios between muscle meat, bone, and organs, how much food he needed to eat, and what ingredients raw feeders commonly fed. But that was basically it. Looking back at the old recipes I made with a nutritionist's perspective, I noticed a few issues. For instance, blue mussels and green tripe, which provide manganese, were hard for me to source, so manganese was often low. I also didn't have access to spleen for quite a while, so iron was sometimes low in his diet too. Manganese and iron are both important for growth and development, among other things. But did Matsu experience stunted growth, anemia, or joint problems? No. This made me question daily balance versus balance over time. But what really changed my view on balancing for growing pets was during a podcast I was in. And the father of Raw and founder of The Barf Diet, Dr. Ian Billinghurst, was part of it. We were discussing different aspects of raw feeding when a viewer asked our thoughts on daily balance versus balancing over time. I gave my answer, which was that balancing over time is possible for adults, but for growing pets, it's better to balance daily. When I asked Dr. Billinghurst's thoughts, he surprised me. He actually disagreed. He said that even for growing pets, balancing over time is possible and even beneficial in the long run because it makes them as a species more resilient. All species alive today are adapted to handling an unbalanced diet every now and then, and the body is designed to make do with the nutrients it's given during tough times. This discussion made me look at balancing from a different perspective and answered the questions I had after I realized Matsu was just fine on the meals I made him. Balancing doesn't have to be so black and white. And if the meal is short on a nutrient one week, this isn't going to be gravely detrimental. Speaking of nutrients, this brings me to my next unpopular opinion. Zinc is a mineral that appears low in many raw meals. It's taught that red meats and organs do provide some, but to meet zinc requirements, we need to either feed oysters or a zinc supplement. When I started formulating my pet's meals and analyzing the nutrients, I did notice that most meals were a few milligrams low in zinc. But if the diet was mainly red meats, zinc was met. However, raw feeders often mix red meats with white meats to provide protein variety. So in this case, the zinc will be a little low. Because balancing is something raw feeders take very seriously, they often jump to adding a zinc supplement in fear of causing a deficiency. But is this the best thing to do? One day when I was speaking with a fellow pet nutritionist and raw feeder, she told me about a recent incident that made her question zinc supplements. She said that owners were coming to her for advice because their pet began experiencing sudden GI issues. She asked them to list everything they were feeding their pet. And after speaking with a few owners, she noticed a common theme. All of these recipes included a zinc picolinate supplement which is what she, myself, and many other pet nutritionists suggested to feed at the time. To see if her theory was correct, she told them to remove the zinc supplement and feed more red meats or oysters instead. And not long after doing so, the GI symptoms subsided. 
Something else I found interesting regarding zinc was a 2023 study on what affects the zinc levels in dogs, whether that be age, breed, gender, diet, or lifestyle. And what they found was that gender and alter status were the only two factors that seemed to affect zinc levels. However, what really made an impact on me was their last statement. They claimed that despite the general belief that homemade diets are low in zinc, the diet did not affect the zinc levels in the body significantly. This tells me that raw diets causing a zinc deficiency isn't as likely as we might think. And maybe there's more zinc in certain meats than what the food data tells us. So these findings make me believe that zinc supplements aren't usually necessary. And speaking of not usually necessary, this brings me to my next unpopular opinion. There's a certain food that's loaded with zinc, vitamin E, and manganese, which all happen to be commonly low in raw diets. Because of this, raw feeders thought this food was perfect because it killed three birds with one stone. What is it? Nuts and seeds, like pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, and almonds. I used to feed these to Matsu often, but as I began learning more about nutrient bioavailability and true species appropriate foods, I started to reconsider. These are plant-based ingredients, and it's difficult to know how well these nutrients are absorbed into a carnivore's body. Not only this, but they're also very high in calories and fat. And sometimes pets begin gaining weight if their owners aren't careful on how much they feed. So I'm not a fan of relying on nuts and seeds for these nutrients anymore. I much prefer feeding things like red meats, green tripe, and eggs. Well, there you have it. Do you agree or disagree with my unpopular opinions? What unpopular opinions do you have regarding raw feeding? Let me know in the comments.